stay on mute. Cameras on, 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 everybody stay on mute. Cameras on, stay on mute. Everybody, cameras on, stay on mute. Cameras on, stay on mute. Cameras on, stay on mute. Cameras on, everybody, cameras on, stay on mute. Cameras on, stay on mute. Got to see your face. Got to see your face. Turn your cameras on, stay on mute. Cameras on, but stay on mute. Everybody stay on mute. Cameras on. Got to see your face. Everybody have to see your face. Everybody cameras on. Stay on mute. Cameras on. Stay on mute. Everybody, once your cameras on, stay on mute. Everybody turn your cameras on. Nobody's special. Everybody's cameras on. Whoever this, this hood is, you got way too much backlighting. Close your blinds, turn on the overhead light. Everybody close on unless you, if you've got a hat on, it better be for religious purposes. Hat off, get up out of bed, set up straight. Nobody in the bed. Nobody naked, close on. Everybody well lit, shining faces. Put your name on your, on your screen. Nobody's mom named them Galaxy A10E. Galaxy J7 Prime. Nobody, nobody's mom named them that. I want your name. Change it to your name. Get somewhere and be still. No walking around. You're going to make me seasick. Tammy Stevens, turn your camera on. Everybody's camera's on. I think she's the only one that doesn't have audio. <clears throat> All right, when I call your name, take yourself off mute and answer. If you have a lawyer, your lawyer is probably going to answer for you also. All right, let's see. All right, uh, Hannah Hudson and Stefan Gonev. Uh, all right, where's the respondent? All right. Both of you guys, raise your right Here, hand. Here, Your Honor. All right. For both of you, raise your right hands. All right. Now, swear a firm testimony you're about to give in this petition for a TPO is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, Your, yes, Honor. your Honor. All right. Either one of you have uh, witnesses, ma'am? Potentially. Okay. Are they here? Um, they are with me in person, Your Honor. Okay. What about you, sir? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. So, Ms. Hudson, if you're going to use them, they can't be in the same room with you. Hmm. If you're if you're going to use a witness, ma'am, they can't be in the same room with you. Okay. So, are you going to use them as a witness? Um, no, Your Honor. Okay. All right. All right. Here's what we do. All right. We don't interrupt each other. We don't talk over each other. We don't interrupt me. All right. We just kind of get to the facts. Tell me what's going on. I don't need a whole bunch of background. I don't need to know where you met, anything like that. I just want you to stick to the facts. Basically, tell me what happened, okay? Start for the most recent event and work backwards. All right. Go ahead, Ms. Hudson. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Um, I'm a little nervous. And have that's okay. Anxiety. I have an anxiety disorder, so if I struggle that's a, with it. That's okay. Don't be scared of me. I just sound like crap. I'm not, you know, I just got a little bit of a cold going on. <laughs> um, if you do see me down, uh, looking down, I'm just referencing a couple of notes just so okay. I can get this moving smoothly because right. I know time is valuable and I want to make the best statement that I can. So um, I will be sharing my screen with you momentarily. So it took me until the um, end of this past December to be strong enough with help to insist on my right on being left alone for good. And I asked him to leave me alone multiple times in the last weeks of December, 2020. Beginning January 2nd, I have not responded to him whatsoever. <clears throat> I have ma maintained a strict no contact with him. So starting January 1st, he is to January 20th, he has contacted me over 50 times in a 20 day period. And that is when I finally uh, contacted the um, Cobb County Police. The, um, I can share the, um, my screen share um, the police report. I can also give you the police report number if you would like. Um, share.
So the first report is number 21004930. Um, this is a certified copy that I scanned. And um, I wanted to note that um, the officer I spoke to, Officer Pavlakis, in the third paragraph towards the end states that um, Stefan was clear to not contact me after he spoke to him and that legal matters may be pursued if he continued such contact. Um, it, it was stated that, you know, Stefan understood this. Um, and he also admitted to Officer Pavlakis that he had been contacting me over those 50 times via Instagram fake accounts and star 67 so that I could not trace or block his number. He also left me multiple voicemails. Um, I'm going to show you very briefly the um, just proof of contact. These are listed by um, date. So we are going to go to January. So it starts here on January 20th. Um, and oh, actually it starts here on January 20th. And these are all Instagram accounts and um, a Snapchat account, just multiple messages. I would block his accounts. He would make new accounts and continue contacting me. Um, we're still going through now. We're at the 16th. He's pretended to be people that I know and um, tried to befriend me that way. Uh, these are more screenshots. This this is a particular screenshot of just all the fake accounts that I had blocked, like a whole full screen full list. We're now on to January 11th and I'm still going. I counted, there's about 60 screenshots here. Um, that's not including just voicemails, but I put 50 in the statement just because um, I wasn't sure I could provide are these, all. Are these text messages? Yes, these are messages through Instagram. As I said, I would block him and he would just make continuously new accounts up to three in one day sometimes. What are these messages? What do they say? Um, they, they say a lot of things. As, as you can see, they're all very long. Um, some of them I had to use two screenshots because he would continuously send these long messages. Most of them, um, it consists of him either being aggressive and rude one um, that is stated in the police report that I just mentioned um, says that he's demanding that I pay him $7,000 so that um, because that's what he apparently spent on me when we were dating at the time and for me to leave him alone, I need to pay him that money. But then there would also be very kind messages telling me that he misses me, he wants me back. It would kind of range from him being really angry with me for not responding to him, to him being really sweet, hoping that I would respond to him and then him being angry again and sending more um, or more messages um, to scare me uh, most likely. Um, just back and forth, up and down. That's also stated in the police report that the messages were either just being aggressive or nice, and it would go back and forth uh, between that. And the screenshots are still going, but we're ending here on January 1st, finally, right here. Like I said, I counted, it's about 60 um, from that 20 day period. Um, so I did file that, that first police report after all this, these incidents. Um, as I said, he admitted to contacting me. And after um, he had told the police officer that he understood to stop contacting your legal matters first, uh, harassing communications could be pursued. Uh, he didn't stop. He attempted to contact me once in April and multiple times in May. I am um, going to reference another police report here in a second because I told the officer what he likes to do is what I call dipping his toe in the water, which means after being told to stop by the police, he'll wait a while and, and I'll think that life is normal again. And then he'll do it again. And if I let it slide or I don't say anything, he continues doing it and picks it right back up again. So he contacted me once in April and multiple times in May. So I just wanted, because I'm stating this, I wanted to show you that 
he did contact me once in April because I want to make sure that I prove everything that I'm saying. So as you see this voicemail right here, this is his number. His number is blocked, but he would still be sending me voicemails, uh, like I said, through star 67, and I would be receiving them. So here is the one time in April, and I have uh, multiple instances for May um, in here, and I believe a few others as well um, that I will be showing you momentarily. Um, so the next big thing was in May, he made inappropriate comments on my job's um, social media page. I posted, they, sorry, they posted photos of my hands. I was modeling our essential oil products. We are a um, new up and coming subscription box company. Um, and he posted publicly um, on May 14th that he knew those hands looked familiar with an eggplant emoji, which symbolizes male genitalia. Um, and I have been very, very careful to keep this job private. Um, I am unaware of how- Hold on, that, hold on one second. Uh, investigator, you, you're with Douglas County, right? Yes, Your Honor, I am. All right, uh, let me send you to a breakout room because um, I think this is where this other case is with, um, let me send you over there to breakout room one, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm oh, not you, Miss Hudson. I'm oh, talking to the sorry. No, I'm talking to the detective, so maybe she can help out. That's where those folks are in that case. All right. Thank you. All right. They may need your input. Maybe you can help resolve that. All right. All right. Go ahead, Miss Hudson. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, um, as I said, symbolizes male genitalia. Um, I am unaware of how he learned of my place of work. Um, it's very small scale and I kept it very private um, because I didn't obviously want him to know where I worked. It's a company of women. So um, that's a very uncomfortable situation having someone that is stalking me. And um, let me show you the screenshots. Um, after the first one, um, I was um, talked by my boss um, and I told him that I would um, file another police report, which I will show you momentarily. But um, to extend the um, abuse, he, he did it again. Um, and that's when I was almost fired. And um, Stefan knows that I have to support myself to get through college. And um, let me show you the screenshots. So this is the first one. This is a screenshot directly from my employer's email. My employer gets these emails. Um, oh no. My employer gets these emails um, whenever anyone comments on social media. So after posting it on social media, he apparently left it there, went and blocked my employer so that my employer could not find his account and block it themselves. And that's when he had posted it, unblocked them and decided to post it again. And um, as I said, we have very small scale clientele because we're a new business. So anyone could have seen that. It was one of the only comments that had been put under the picture. Um, and my employer was unable to delete it, which distressed them greatly because that is very inappropriate and reflects badly on our company. Um, so I did file another police report because of that incident. It is right here. It is police report number 210493, um, where I also asked to speak to the same officer, Officer Pavlakis of Cobb County. Um, and told him what was going on and how I was afraid because I was unsure of how he learned of my place of employment as I have kept it very private. Um, and that it made me feel uncomfortable and that he was continuing to make those comments. And I also told him that he had contacted me in, um, in that, that one time in, um, I believe I said April, as well, because I had caught it late because it uh, a couple weeks later because it was in my junk. 
of uh, blocked. So, and, but this was also going on currently. So that's when I contacted him and told him everything that had happened since we had last spoken. And that's what's reflected in this um, report. Unfortunately, um, I believe he said he was not able to receive um, an answer from him or a response to this phone call, but it's still, um, I still have it obviously written here um, that I wrote, I have a report written for it. Um, Hold on one second, Ms. Hudson. Ms. Stevens, Ms. Stevens, I'm removing you from this meeting until you stop driving. Go ahead, Ms. Hudson. Thank you. Um, so next, I, um, I have a little sister in my sorority who I'm responsible for, and she looks up to me, and I consider her a very, very close loved one. And um, he reached out to her um, and here is just proof of him, of him reaching out to her. Um, this was um, him messaging her on Instagram. Um, I don't think I've mentioned yet that after the first police report, I took myself off of Instagram um, because I could no longer handle um, just the amount of times he was contacting me and what he was contacting me about. Um, I have still do not have an Instagram and all of my social media accounts since I took down my Instagram um, have been, I keep them very private, basically locked down, removed a lot of like Greek life friends because um, I just don't feel comfortable anymore. Um, but continuing, um, that is the. All right. Hold on, Miss Hudson. All right, uh, sir. Let me hear from you. Hey, Your Honor. Uh, I wanted to ask you. I. It says that this was filed on the second of July, and I did not receive it until less than forty-eight hours ago. However, it states in here that I have to until three days before the hearing to ask for a continuance but I was not given this paper until less than 48 hours ago. That's when I was served. Um, I attempted to contact my criminal attorney's office, but he is out of the country um, and he will not be back until I believe his office said the end of next week. Um, I wanted to ask if you could issue me a continuance because I'd like to speak with my attorney before proceeding any further with this. Mm, no, it's a little late. We've already started the hearing. So what do you have to say about everything she said? Um, I'd rather I'd rather not make any comments without my attorney present. Um, I'd be willing to just consent to the TPO um, if I'm not able to be issued a continuance so that I can speak to my attorney. All right. Gotcha. All right. Well, we're going to put this in place for 12 months. Um, if you want to put your email address over there in the chat, sir, we'll be glad to. Uh, sure shoot you a copy. You can send it directly to Miss Free. Um, that way you won't have to put your email address out there for everyone. We will shoot you a copy of the TPO. So I'll just go ahead and let you know. Um, if you violate this, you who am I sending it to? Uh, it'll say on there, it says Amber Derrico Free in the chat. You can send it directly to her. Right. We'll email you a copy of the order. Okay. No problem. If you violate this, you could be charged with aggravated stalking, which is a penalty up to 10 years. And maybe you want to note that over there, Mr. John Garland, who's a criminal defense attorney. Uh, maybe you, if you have any questions after that, maybe you want to contact him in his office. Sure. No problem. I have sure he can message no you. desire to have any part okay, of I'm sure he can whatsoever. message you his contact info if you have any questions once you receive the, um, a copy of this TPO. Absolutely. And I think he is in the country. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh-huh. Thank you, uh, Ms. Hudson. As long as we have your email, we'll email you a copy of this order and we will, um, you can pick up your certified copy um, Monday, or I'm sure you can reach out to your advocate and they can help you too. All right, stay healthy and safe. Mr. Um, Gunnev, once you send your email to Ms. Free, you can go ahead and leave also. Um, Amber, Derek, go free. It yep. is sent. I haven't gotten a reply back, but. Yeah, I have it. Okay, all right, cool.
Right, we've got Albert Moon and Lauren Stubbs. You both um, take yourself off mute. Do either of you have witnesses? Yes, Your Honor. And who are your witnesses? Cody Wilkie, Erica Osborne. Okay, they're on here. What about you, Mr. Moon? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right, let's see. So both of your witnesses are on here? Yes, ma'am. All right, so I'm going to send them back to the waiting room. All right, both of you raise your right hands. All right, do you swear a firm testimony you're about to give in this petition for a TPO is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right, Mr. Moon, go ahead and tell me uh, what's going on. So the last contact I've had in regards to this case is with Detective Morgan William. He basically called Lauren Stubbs and then called me afterwards um, just to get a clear an idea with what was going on between us. I'm sorry, Mr. McDonald. Ms. Freed, do we have proof of service on Ms. Stubbs? No, Your Honor, we need proof. Okay. Mr. Moon, do you have proof of service showing that she was served? As far as I'm aware, she's not, but she was also contacted by a detective and also gave a counterclaim. And she also is here as of this moment. Well, I mean, I understand that. <sighs> so, Ms. Stubbs, when were you served? I actually was never officially served. Are you willing to go ahead and sign an acknowledgement of service? Uh, yes, I did sign an acknowledgement of service after the detective had called me. But did you sign one for us, the court? Um, I believe so. I got it notarized and I got it sent in. You sent it in to us, the court? I sent it in to Jill Sherling for her, and she said that she had sent it to you. She's Okay, you sent it to Jill. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Moon. Last contact I had, I was with Detective Morgan William. He basically uh, told me that he spoke to Lauren Stubbs. I don't want to hear what the detective said. The detective's not here. Okay. Then previous to before that, the last previous contact I've had with Lauren Stubbs is on June 29th on Tuesday through text message. Um going back to the 28th, 26th, 24th, pretty much every single day for almost a month now. Um, these text messages range from anything that contains um, um, basically asking for money, stalking, gang stalking, um, threatening to ruin my life, get me fired from my current employer, um, and various other psychological attacks on me. Um, now, she also has showed up in person to my house um, several times um, outside waiting for me to leave in her car. She has also gotten within a certain distance of my home to connect to my smart TV to prove that she was outside of my house and that she was out there waiting for me. Um, and I also have several text messages um, stating just the various above to show to the court. Okay, so you guys dated. So start from June 18th. What do I mean? Go ahead. Um, we basically broke up and um, she showed up unannounced to my home. Um, we went for a short walk and I told her I was breaking up and I called the police because um, she was just starting to get um, physically physical with me. And um, the police were called. This was the second time that they were there. Um, they basically said that if you two can't behave properly and work this thing out, then get us involved. Um, the police weren't involved again after that. Um, and after that, I just tried to cut off contact with her because I, we broke up. Um, and after that, there was a, uh, just a flurry of texts. Um, I think on the day that I filed my police report to get a TPO, I had received over 60 plus texts that day. And that was also the same day that I took the video evidence of her showing up to my house unannounced, um, connecting to my TV. And in addition, um, as she's starting to fire me, she knows the person within the, uh, the, the company that's basically getting us employment, who is telling her what uh, productions that I'm working on, which is confidential. And there's really no other way for anyone to know unless you're basically employing us into that production. All right, what else? Uh, that's all I have. Oh, and online stalking as well. Okay, tell me about that. Um, so basically I'm taking classes online um, to improve my employability and she found out that I was 
basic, she basically is going across all the different websites that their social media on and scouring them to see if there's any updates on me. And then she sent me various text messages saying that I spent money on that when I should have given it to her. Um, she's going on to my Instagram. She said that um, you're now basically in communication with someone that she knew. Um, and then also the apartment that I was staying in, um, my roommate basically put up a advertisement saying that my room was up for someone to lease from him. And she sent me that through text as well, saying that she knew that that was going on. All right. Anything else? Uh, that's it. All right. <clears throat> All right, ma'am, I'll hear from you. All right. Um, Your Honor, I have not spoken to Albert since he filed the TPO. I have absolutely no desire to talk to him. Um, our relationship was very abusive uh, mentally and physically. Um, I was trying to contact him to get my belongings back, my money back, and he had hit a car with my car and he told me that he would be getting it fixed. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this is hard. Um, I got him this job in this industry. Um, I worked really hard for this job. I moved here without any friends or family to live my career. Um, I said, but I have not talked to anybody about this, but since I put in such a good word for him and got him in so easy, I do not want to be affiliated with him in this industry. And I want people to know that he could also be taking their money belongings and I don't want him to assault or hurt another girl. Um, I have not been able to work the past three weeks because I am nervous to run into him at work. And I didn't find out through someone else that he was working those jobs. He told me that he was working those jobs before we broke up. We broke up about a month ago, so I had only contacted him for two weeks after we broke up. Uh, the night we broke up, we went on a walk. He said, I'm not moving in with you, which was a week and a half before we were supposed to move in together. Um, I said, we need to talk about this and split our stuff up. We, like, we just need to have a conversation. He would not have a conversation. He called the police. Um, I just sat across the street and waited for them to come. And I told them like, that's fine. I, I do not want to see him. I just wanted to figure this out. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I drove him for four months to and from work um, for free to help him out because he was in a car accident. Um, as soon as he got his car, he dipped. Um, he basically used me for rides for a career. Um, he hit another car with my car. And when he did that, he got a gun out from his house, took it to my car and told me I couldn't file a police report he then tried to grab my phone and myself he stood outside my car with the gun in his mouth telling me that he would kill himself if he did that um i called the police um on him secretly and they had to talk him down to get the gun it was really traumatic for me i'm sorry i'm upset right now he would bring up killing himself a lot if things weren't going his way. Um, it was one of those situations where I was scared to leave um, because there's one thing about abuse, it's easy to keep going with false promises that it will be better. But I'm still going to make a beautiful life for myself even if I lost the past year because coming home from a failed relationship is a lot better than going home in a coffin. All right, sir, do you have any, uh, the physical proof where she's been texting you? Yes, I have it on the Dropbox. Right, so you wanna share, you want to share your screen? Yes, of course. Uh, 
So this is the evidence of her showing up unannounced. So as you can see here, it says Lauren Stubbs unlinked a device. So basically my phone is connected to the TV. She has to be within a certain range. Um, I think it's uh, less than 30 yards for her to connect to the TV and to send the signal out to her. And she, this was just what was posted here. Um, and I'm also just stating that what the time and the date of this was going on. Here are the text messages. Did you, did you wreck her car? No, there was a there's a fender bender for lack of a better term, but so that, the car was not wrecked. That's fender bender. That's a wreck. I mean, there's no. It's a wreck. It's a wreck. It's a wreck. It's a wreck. You call it what you want, dude. Did you pay for the damage to her car? No. What I told her is send me an invoice and I can send you the money, but I never receive any invoice because how can I Stop. know that that Stop. will be fixed? Do you, have, do you have an invoice? He did not say that. And I, mean, I don't care what he said. Do you have an invoice where you had it fixed or how much it's going to cost? In person, me and him had gone to get it a quote. How much is it going to cost? $800. Did you have a quote? We went in person, but I can get it printed out from them. Okay. I will go back. Sir, were you there when she got the quote? She never got a quote when I was there in person with her. <sighs> okay, so here's the screenshots. Um, Basically, another witness she has here, Erica Osborne. Um, I went out with some friends that I met at work, and she just happened to be there along with her friend. And this is just showing that um, she was in communication with Lauren about my whereabouts um, after the PTO was filed. Um, so this is just her um, basically just saying, like, I know that you were there and um, that underneath this here, it says, I know that you're working the scene for a production that I was supposed to be booked on, but it was well in advance that there's really no way for her to know unless someone within the actual casting company tells you. Um, because the way that it basically works is that the, um, the people who are actually on the production site at the time of filming, they don't have that information ahead of time. They're basically given it the night before, um, as far as I'm aware. And because of that, the only way that she could have gotten that information was directly from the casting uh, company itself. So that's the first text. So you need to give me my money. You need to tell me everything. I told everyone in the film industry to avoid you because you're an abuser. So this is um, part of the evidence of her trying to get me fired, um, trying to get me ostracized from um, the industry. Um, It's, here's uh, text evidence stating that she's going to put out a YouTube video in Atlanta and basically try to abuse and um, state that I'm an abuser and um, destroy my name. This text here is telling her to stop texting me. Um, this is stated um, from Officer Blunt at the Sandy Springs Police Department. Um, beneath that, it says that she has filed her TPO and that she'll see me on set next week. Again, she's continuing to talk to me after I've told her that she has to stop. She's continuing to ask about the car. Asking about the car, basically asking for money. Just take, give me a minute while this loads. Uh, 
right. <clears throat> All right, ma'am, I'll hear from you. Just let me finish hearing from her. Okay. Sure, I'll stop um, sharing. Your Honor, me and Albert did go to the car shop to get a quote together. Um, they had quoted us about the $800. Um, I knew what he was working because we had recently broken up and we had shared with each other what we were working on. Um, I have called HR um, in person. Um, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, it was a personal services hotline basically for um, the film production. And they told me that they are unable to let me know what he is working on so I can avoid him. So I have no idea actually what he is working on. And that is why I have mostly not worked the past three weeks because I am very scared to run into him. We did work together twice on set um, and we were civil. We did not speak to each other. We did not have any encounters. Um, we just sat across from each other, um, stayed far away from each other. Um, but after the TPO uh, he filed, I did not go to set because I did not want to break that. So that has caused me a lot of lost work time. Are you guys still working together? No, you're not. Um, I have been offered to work a lot of times on what he is working on, but I do not want to uh, break the TPO. I am very sorry about those texts. He did terminate our lease um, a week and a half before we were supposed to move, and I was very upset, and I really wanted my belongings back. He had my MacBook, my Cricut. You have all your stuff back? He left it outside my house in the open, uh, I think, two weeks ago. So you've got all your stuff back? Yes. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put this in place, ma'am. I'm going to allow you. Here's what I'm going to allow. I'm going to put it in place for six months. Y'all need a little breathing room. But I'm going to say, I'm not going to restrain you from being able to work. So it's 10 yards if you guys happen to be working together on a set. I'm not going to restrain your ability to make money. So think about a football field, okay? So okay. 10 yard line, 20 yard line, because I'm not going to restrain anybody's ability to make money, especially during these times. All right. Um, don't call him. Don't reach out to him. I will not. <clears throat> If you go and you get a quote and it's to fix your car, you can send him that. And then he's got 50 days to pay you after you send him that. Okay. But Thank stay you. away from him. Stop calling him. Leave him alone. Um, but that one time, that's it. Okay. Don't reach out to him anymore. Yes, Your Honor. I have not. And I have no plans on speaking to him. <clears throat> Where did he go? You just hang up. I think so. He probably is upset. So <clears throat> I'm going to let you send him that so he can. Um, obviously, he says yes, he did damage. Well, he called it a fender bender instead of work, but I'm not splitting hairs. Okay. All right. Thank so, you so much uh, for helping me. So it'll be six months. So you can send him that one time. He can re he can pay you back. But um, it'll make 10 yards while you're at work if you, have to, if you have to work with him. If I were you, I'd kind of avoid that. Yeah, I am trying my hardest. So when he comes back, you got that, Jill? Because I think this is one of yours. Yep. Okay. All right. You can go ahead. And, uh, do we have your email? Do you want to put your email in the chat? Miss Friel, email you a copy of this order. Okay. Thank That's you. And team. I am in uh, temporary housing right now. He does not know my address, and I do not want him to know my That's address. That's okay. Just put your email in there. We're going to shoot you a copy of the um, order. Judge, could she email him the invoice? Is that how we want to do that? Yes. Yes. Okay. You have his email address? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You can email him that invoice. But okay. put your email in the chat to Ms. Free and we'll email you a copy of the order. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Funeral. Mr. Stevens, Mr. Wingfield, can you both turn your cameras on, please? Mr. Wingfield. Yes, ma'am. Turn your camera on. I, right here, when I look at it, it says start. Start your video. Said, My camera on. Start your video. And not start. Your you got to start your video, Mr. Wingfield. I can't see you. There you go. Raise your right hands for me. You swear a firm testimony you're about to give in this petition for a TPO is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, yes. ma'am. All right. Let's not interrupt each other. All right, Miss Stevens, you have any witnesses or is it just you? It's just me. All right. What about you, sir? Yes. 
Yes, what? Is it just you? Yes, I got I got two people. Where are they? They're supposed to be in the room. I don't know. What's it's their been name? so long. What's um their... uh the boy right. Hendricks. All right. Tiana Lewis. Okay, I'm gonna put them in the waiting room. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Miss Stevens. Judge, yes. I got I got a witness. Netta favor, she on there. Uh, Netta McCord. Where is she at? Can you raise your hand, Ms. McCoy? Um, okay. I'm here. All right, I'll put you in the waiting room. All right, all right, go ahead, Ms. Stevens. Tell me what's going on. Okay, um, Mr. Wingfield been calling around, calling people, showing people my naked pictures, uh, contacting my ex-boyfriend. I wanna know what um, he did to you strictly between uh, you and him. Yes, he um just been calling around, harassing, driving, uh, been seen at my job, driving around. And um, making harassing phone calls to my family members. What's he done to you, though? How many times has he been contacting you? I have since I took the restraining order off. I haven't talked to him, but he's been contacting my other family members about me. Before you took it out, what's he been doing? Uh, on June the twenty sixth and the twenty seventh, he uh, contacted my ex boyfriend. And um, he what about you? Him, what kind of contacts he had with you? What's been going on between you and him? <laughs> Since the fourth, I haven't had any contact with him. All right. Something made you come and get a TPO. What is it made you get a TPO? That's what I want to know about between you and him. Coming by my job, driving by my job, job driving to my job. He really had me uh, afraid. He was Even, telling people that he was going to, uh, what he was going to do to me and stuff. What has he said to you that he's going to do? Um, He haven't said anything to me. Since the fourth, I haven't talked to Mr. Wingfield, but he's been telling other right, people. Before the fourth, tell me about before the fourth. What else, something led you to come get a TPO? So what happened? Um, he was threatening to come to my house, uh, mm -hmm. to my fiance, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, threatening to show him pictures and tell him about the relationship we was in, and um, things like that of that nature. Okay, so. Things like that, and this and that and the other. I don't know. You have to be specific with me, Miss Stevens. He was threatening to come to my house. Okay. What was he going to do when he came to your house? If I threaten to come to your house, you better have some dinner. That's what he <laughs> So what is he threatening? If he's threatening to come to your house. Threatening to come to my house to um, tell my fiance about our relationship. Okay. And what else? Um, that's about it. Other than the calling other people, uh, telling them stuff that he was going to do and well, some, uh, some... showing my naked pictures, uh, calling my ex, uh, boyfriend, showing them my naked pictures and stuff like that. When here it says at some point in time, he's choked you allegedly. When did he choke you? Um, this was way, we was in a relationship. It was like three months ago. He okay. Grabbed. Well, tell me about that. What happened then? Um, we met up at the uh, bullpen and, um, he, he got mad about something and um, he uh, say I um, beat you and he th put his hands around my neck and choked me. All right. He, he used to call me all kinds of names. He's very um, manipulant. He used to call me bees and stuff like that. And I said that I told him that his mother was a bee and he got mad. So when he seen me, I guess, you know, that's when he choked me. What do you got to say, Mr. Wingfield? Uh, Judge, this is, a, this is a psychopath. What I got, what I'm dealing with, I told this lady to stop calling me, leave me alone. But for some reason, she want to have me and her, her fiancé. And when she said about me coming to her job, only time I've been to her job, I brought her food before. I never rolled by her job. If I rolled by her house, she got cameras at her house, she would have pictures. I got her on call block. She have her cousin, daughters calling me. I said, Tammy, please leave me alone. She have bought me clothes. She have bought me, gave me money. And she basically is a paymaster. She want, she really want to control me. She want to have her cake and ice cream and eat it too. And I told her it wasn't going to work like that. So she got me, she tried to have me and her fiance being. And all this is a misunderstanding. It started back in October. I went on a trip with her friend, which she's saying is her sister. And the guy 
that's married to a, supposed to be sister is my best friend. I grew up with him. So I took a trip, got some sex the first day from, from Miss Tammy. And from that on, we left the trip, got back to Atlanta. We started mingling and modeling and stuff. And she don't fell in love. I told her, I said, you had to be the biggest fool to fall in love with me because I'm not in love with you. I got a, I had a lady at the time. Stuff broke up. The relationship broke up between me and the lady that I was dealing with. I told her about Tammy. This, this, this lady, Tammy Williams, Stevenson, McCoy, she got like three different names. She reached out trying to find, find um, my lady trying to get in contact with her. For some reason, she paid a guy who she talking about her friend to get the number, get her number. So my my ex-lady was in fear of her life. So I went on and told her, I said, this lady right here is trying to get in contact with you. And she was like, she was like, for what? We and me, you not together. She said, I don't know why she's trying to get in contact. Then she reached out to my daughter. This would made the, this would really made everything crazy to my ex-wife. And I'm like, why are you meeting out to my ex-wife? We're not together. So it's just so uh, I got involved with a psycho, Judge. And I don't want to have nothing to do with her. I wish she'll disappear and go somewhere. That's all I got to say, Judge. <clears throat> Did you show some naked pictures of her somewhere? I ain't showed none. She sent pictures to my phone, I deleted them. Yeah. All right, hold on. Let me let I have me... text messages that she got in contact with my daughter. I gave it to y'all in the court. I got text messages she got in contact with my, my ex-wife. For what reason, I don't know. This lady's a psycho. She's stalking me. All on my ex-Facebook, trying to log in, making attempts. They're asking me who is, is I'm, I'm that person. It right. is, it is, it's crazy, uh, Judge. Yeah. And I'm sick of her. And I don't want to have nothing to do with her. I don't want her around me ever again. All right. Hold on. Hold on one second, Miss Stevens. All right, Mr. Garland, what y'all got? Your Honor, we've got an, an agreement that they will that he will stay away from Miss Pryor, that he'll have no threatening or harassing uh, contact with Miss Pryor, that he will get a drug evaluation and the order will stay in place for six months to that effect. All right. Do you want, do you need us to do that for you? Uh, I've, I've Are you been graciously been provided a form that I can fill out and I will send back. And we've also agreed that all communication will go through the family wizard co-parenting app. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, Judge, then, could I say one thing? Well, hold they on. got me charged with family violence. I'm not married to this lady. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> All right. So um, that's cool. What's up? So, Mr. Garland, once Miss Pryor and if you can sign on behalf of your client, once y'all get it back, we'll email it. We'll email you if y'all just put your emails in the uh, chat and we'll email you both y'all a copy of the orders. Okay. And you can get back to your um, your weekend with your family, Mr. Garland and uh, Miss Pryor. You can go ahead and get back to your thing. And Mr. Bell, you can go ahead and get back to your weekend, too. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, y'all stay, y'all all stay healthy and safe. Thank you, Your Honor. Good okay. to see you. All right, you too. Mr. Wingfield doesn't mean you're married to her. It's just the title of the uh, it's just the title of the uh, statute. Doesn't mean y'all are married or related or anything else. It's just the title of the statute. Let me let uh, let me hear from one. Let me hear from her. Uh, hold on. <coughs> All right, what's <coughs> Ma'am, can you take yourself off mute? One more later, I'll be you. All right, ma'am, can you raise your right hand, your witness? I forgot your name already. All right, do you swear a firm testimony you're about to give in this petition for a TPO is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. All right, tell me what you know firsthand between these two people. Um, They were dealing with each other. Everything was fine at first. And... My mother-in-law decided that she didn't want to deal with Mr. Winfield no more. And um, he's, she called me and asked me to reach out to him because she didn't want to call or text his phone because he was already sending naked pictures of her and 
sending naked pictures of her to people, making threats, um, threatening to come between her and family. And I don't, I don't, I think the woman may be a old friend of his or a girlfriend, but she called my auntie and told them that my mother supposedly have herpes. And now that's the thing that's going around saying that he said that she need to go to the doctor and it's just a whole big mess. Social media, it's it just a whole big mess with him. I'm assuming because he mad because she he still want to talk to her and deal with her. And she don't want to deal with him no more knowing that she's in a relationship. He want to take a place. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. You can go ahead and leave if you want. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. All right, let me get, let's see. Yes. All right, let me see. Where'd Mr. Bora go? All right, Mr. Bora, raise your right hand for me. You swear a firm testimony you're about to give in this petition for TPO is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Now tell me what you know about these two. All I know is uh, my dad months ago had um, previously told me like, he was talking to a lady named Miss Tammy because she gives out like free plates or something to help the community or homeless people. Um, so yeah, and let me see. Um, that's basically it. Like we never like really talked about her much. Um, but recently on June eighth, if I can go to my messages on Facebook, my messenger app, she had messaged me and she said, "Hello, could you tell your mother to check?" Um, her messages is very important and I'm just like who is Tammy Williams because we've never um, talked before and we're not friends on Facebook so I was like hi you want to talk to my mom and she was I was like I was asking how exactly do you know her and that's when she replied and she said um, yes I'm in class now but please give her please have her call me and gave me her number she said Mrs. Tammy thanks and then she said your father is out here scandalizing my name to people and my family and I just want to share some things with her that man is the devil so um I'm just like one I don't know you and then two you call my dad a devil like what so I just blocked her off of Facebook um because we're all grown I'm grown I have a whole husband kid whatever you got going on you know I don't need to know about because that's what's been doing me. My ne- my dad never told me about this situation, never told me about her. Really, you're really a stranger. And I'm just like, what is this? You know, you're insulting my dad and his character. So um, I did mention it to him or whatever. And then from there, that was basically it. All right. <sighs> All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Can I log off now? Yes, ma'am. All right. Have a blessed one. Bye. Thank you. All right, got Ms. Lewis. Let's see what Ms. Lewis. All right, Ms. Lewis, if you raise your right hand. All right, you swear a firm testimony. You're about to give this petition for a TPO is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. Right, take yourself off mute, please. My all right. uh, that's, okay. yes, that's all right. All right, could you tell me what you know about these two? Um, the only thing that I know is Miss Stevens reached out to me on June the 8th <clears throat> and sent me multiple messages on my Facebook page, um, just stating that she wanted to talk to me and um, that she had some information, you know, to share with me in regards to my ex-husband. And she also reached out to my daughter the same day. All right. All right. I appreciate it, ma'am. Thank you so much for um, hanging out with us. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. All Thank right. You. Stay healthy and safe. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Your All right. Anything else, Mr. Wingfield? Um, only thing else that I, I got to say about this, um, Yana, the lady you just had on as a witness, I never in my life seen that lady. She got a big Tammy, Tammy Steve McCoy, whatever her name is. She got a big family. They're basically a, a bunch of mess. They keep up a lot of mess. Um, that I, I learned after I started dealing with her. I knew she had a man after I dealt with her. And the people who set me up with her, which she's saying is her sister, which is her friend, my best friend, come to find out when I had sex with her, she don't have sex with my best friend. So her friend, husband, she don't have sex with her. And, uh, and about probably five more people that I know. And I told Tammy, I said, Tammy, why are you trying to leave the guy you at home with to try to be over him with me? 
it's just a drive-by. She said, well, I like the way you hit. He's not hitting like you. I said, well, you need to find somebody else to be in this rendezvous what you got going on. Because everybody, judge, the way this going, everybody is having sex with each other in the circle. And her, I was told her family got a, a high sex drive and they like to have sex with multiple people. But they haven't got to that. And this lady's a psycho. You know, and I'm I'm right, I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with my mom. She's 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 on life support. And these folks don't came to the house and all this. This this really just it just caught me on the blind because I told Tammy after last time she bought me something and gave me some money. I put on call block. And she said, I'm not gonna dress you up for, for another beat. And on Facebook, I don't have a Facebook account. I don't have no pictures. I don't have none of this stuff. I just want to be left alone. She can stay over there and do what she's doing with her people and just leave me alone. That's all I got to say, Jill. All right. Anything else from you, ma'am? Yes, I just want him to leave me alone, Judge. And um, his <laughs> lady that he's with now did contact my cousin and told her that she wanted to speak with me. And at first I told my cousin to call the lady. Then I said, no, I don't want to speak with him. I don't went on there and took out the TPO, so I'm going to let the judge handle it. But she did tell my cousin that I need to go to the doctor because Mr. Wingfield got um herpes. So she's, they contacted my family members. My family members haven't contacted Mr. Wingfield. I don't want anything to do with Mr. Wingfield. Mr. Wingfield sitting there telling lies. I just want him to leave me alone, that's it, and stop calling people. Because every time he called people, they calling me, telling me what he said. My ex-boyfriend, he threatened him. You know, he's a big manipulator. He's a big liar, Judge. I have a fiance at home. We happy. I don't want to have anything to do with Mr. Wingfield. All right, so y'all y'all leave no. each other alone for a good minute, don't you? No, I, I will never mess with him again. I you know, I'm right now I'm trying to bury my mother. I'm trying to get off this line so I can go get dressed and get to this funeral. But I, I just don't want to have nothing that. else to do. I understand nothing. that. I'm sorry that you lost your mother. That's that's a hard blow right there. All right, well, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and sign this. Keep y'all away from each other for six months. All right, y'all both stay healthy and safe. We'll email you a copy of the order. Thank you, Judge. All right. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.